outline. This is a digital front end device that can be flexibly plugged into six sub module. The input can be plugged into the receiving module, like FTA tuner receiver and receiver with CAM. It also can plug the encoding submodule, such as HDMI encoding, AV encoding. For the output, it support IP output and RF output. Upgrade your TV system with just one device. The most valuable thing is the price very good. So it can be widely used in various occasions such as analog TV system upgrades, hotel renovations, and communities. We take the most commonly used HDMI plus FTA input submodule combination as an example to show its appearance. Installation and settings. For the front size, there are a LCD display, buttons and indicator lights. RF output. It is very powerful. It not only supports multiple RF carries optional, such as 4 carriers, 8, 12, 16, and 24 carries output but also supports all kinds of modulation standards, DVB-C, DVB-T, ATSC, ISDBT and DTMBT optional data IP output, MPTS slash SPTS output over UDP slash RTP, NMS port for web management, ASI port, two input and two output, for the back side, beside of power port, there are six sub module as input. 16 HDMI as input and 8 DVB-S2 as input. Installation. Step 1, connect RF loop output. Choose sub module H3. Use three coaxial cables to connect the loop output. RF1 output is the input of RF2 input. RF2 output connect with RF3 input. Done. Connect the submodule L3 RF loop output. Step 2 Connect HDMI signal. The signal comes from the network box and passes through the HDMI splitter to obtain multiple HDMI signal sources. Connect the HDMI cable to the submodule L1 and L2 ports in sequence. Step 3. Connect satellite signal. The signal sources are from satellite and connect the splitter. We use coaxial cable connect tuner one of L3 and H3 submodule as their inputs.
Step 4. Connect NMS and IP ports. Connect NMS port for web management. Connect IP data. Step 5. Connect RF coaxial as output. Step 6. Connect terminal. Connect the box with the TV. Then connect the modulator to the box via a coaxial cable. Web Management Enter the web management to set parameters. Home page After entering the account and password, Enter the main interface. You can know the device status. For example, when the HDMI cables are connected to the device, the green light are displayed. The version number of the device is at the bottom of the page. Input interface. Choose the input submodule, L1. L2 are HDMI encoder modules. Set the parameters of the encoder board, including bitrate, resolution, audio format, support AC free. If we select all HDMI channels to use this parameters, then HDMI 2, 3, 4 do not need to be set separately. Choose the tuner submodule and set the parameters of each frequency point where the program needs to be received, including satellite frequency, LNB frequency, symbol rate, and other parameters. Done. The signal of the frequency point will be obtained. Program MUX. If the program needs BISS encryption, set it here. As the submodule L1, L2 and L3 are connected already. Open the input streams from them. Choose the programs we need as the output. In addition to the six submodules as input, we can also multiplex the channels from ASI input and IP input.
output. This device supports 16 carries DVB-T as output. This series can support 4, 8, 12, 16, 24 carriers RF output, with different modulation standard, like ATSC, ISDBT, DVBC, DVBT for optional. DVBT can transmit up to 31.7 M per frequency point. Here we can transmit four sets of 7 MHD programs per frequency point. 16 carries can transmit 64 sets of HD programs. If you need to transmit more programs, you need to order a 24 carriers model. In addition to supporting RF output, it also supports IP output, MPTS and SPTS. Play programs. Select the corresponding modulation method. Search all programs. The device also supports IP output. Select the output protocol as MPTS or SPTS. Select the program to be output via IP. Fill in the IP address. and play it via VLC.
Thank you for watching. Subscribe and we'll keep updated.